Hello. Hi. Hello, good morning and good afternoon to all of you from around the world. Welcome to this fireside chat on sonification and the use and the application in the field of space sciences. My name is Xin Yi and I'm from the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. I lead the Space for Persons with Disabilities project. So um, I'm an Asian woman. I have shoulder length black hair. Uh, I wear glasses and a black blazer. So before I begin the conversation, I would like to show you a very beautiful photo over here. This is a photo of the star galaxy, or rather star cluster, the Western Lune 2. So photos like this have the ability to inspire and to create a sense of awe among people of all ages. However, by assuming that sight is the only way to explore the universe, we are excluding the BVI community. So for today's conversation, we are very delighted to welcome Dr. Wanda diaz Masset. She's a blind astronomer and a strong proponent for the use of sonification in space sciences. Wanda, it's great to have you here today. How are you doing in Puerto Rico? I'm doing fantastic, Sing Yang. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. And thank you to, to your office and thank you to the Zero Project for this opportunity. I want to add that I'm an Afro-Caribbean woman from the island of Puerto Rico, which is located in the Caribbean region of the world. I have dark hair uh, tied in a ponytail. And today I'm wearing a black top. And my pronoun is she, her. And uh, behind me, there is a black optical telescope that is about six feet tall and uh, about 10 inches aperture. And I use it to listen for stellar sources. Thank you, Xinjiang. Thank you. Talking about this, the telescope. So tell me, what are you doing in terms of sonification now? What projects are you involved in? Uh, first, I want to begin um, defining what sonification is. Uh, sonification is to use mainly, but not only, non-speech sound to convey information. Is uh, it, it will be the auditory analog to data visualization or to the visualization of intensities and numbers. Astronomy is about aspects pertaining intensities, meaning that in astronomy we study the intensities of things in outer space, and what I do is that I translate that into sound. And then uh, I can hear how those intensities or numbers uh, vary using audio, either in combination with visual display or, or alone, if the person fancy using it alone. Also, we are experimenting with haptics, which is very, very, very promising. Astronomy seemed to have used sound at the end of the 1800s, and then it stopped. It just suddenly stopped using it. It became then very visual. And many centuries after astronomy was established, I did a very strange find. I did experiments and evidence that the use of audio increases sensitivity to events in the information that by nature are blind to the human eye. In events in the space science information that by nature will be blind to the, to the human eye. My work on um, multisensorial astronomy or in sonification, right, consists on expanding those findings to the mainstream research in astronomy, on searching how combination of attention modalities may hinder or enhance the identification of scientific events that by nature will be blind to, to the human eye. And symmetrically, I use the findings for my data exploration. And um, actually, I work on gravitational gravitational waves, and sometimes with um, X-ray, X-ray. Um, I shouldn't say systems, but X-ray uh, events called counterparts. Right. So, how do you see the field developing in the future? You mentioned that sonification has been used in scientific research. I guess also for yeah. outreach activities. So, how do you see it developing, and what more needs to be done to make it more mainstream? I, I perceive I perceive sonification in the field of space science, or I perceived right the field of space science. Now that we know that multi that now that we know that we were losing findings because our our field of practice was monosensorial, I perceived 
the, the field of space science and astronomy developing in a way in which technological developments and scientific discoveries will not be limited by technologies and methodologies created to fit only one way of performance. Equally, that education and people outreach activities will not be limited by, by things that are created for one way of performance. What I mean is that technologies to do science, to do, to do um, a learning in, in STEM, um, will no longer force people to adapt to those monosensorial ways of performing. Soon it will be the other way around. Technology will have to adapt to the human and performance styles. And um, a, that, that, those performance styles will dictate how technology will develop. And as we are, all of us are by nature multi-sensorial. We either use our, 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 our skin and our nose or um, uh, our eyes and our ears or our ears and in our, in our hands, right? In, in, whatever, in whatever way we, we integrate it. Then as we are all monos, multisensorial, forgive me, as we are all multisensorial, then more scientific discoveries will emerge and more human potential and more ways of exploring information and more ways of learnings will will have a, a will 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 pervade will be will be in the field and of course will mainstream in the field yeah thank you i think you mentioned a very good point about human technology how can we work together with technology to empower people with diverse abilities to excel in this field now maybe you can talk a little bit more about certification which is your field of expertise Sonification requires the use of our ears to listen attentively to the data, right, in order to spot um, anomalies. So how do you think sonification can be integrated into our education system to train our young people in the use of a different multisensory approach to the study of astronomy? That is that is very interesting. Interesting because right now in um, uh, in Puerto Rico, as we suffered the the collapse of the Arecibo Observatory, we are uh, writing a proposal in order to use the um, the the the, uh, the those facilities, right, which are are not being um, are being in use but not fully to use those facilities in order to exploit multisensoriality for educate for education and research on education. So um, uh, we extend right from the from the mainstream research. We extend how to how to for example learn trigonometry listen for uh, mathematical mathematical uh, for, for graphs for mathematical parameters like slopes like um, uh, gradients in in the in the information and to do it in a way that i do not have to adapt to the to the to the to the to the to the form the teacher is bringing me, but the things that the teachers are bringing me will adapt to my ways of, of learning. So the, all the learning, all the STEM learning will be contextualized to my ways of performing. So I can recuperate faster uh, from, from exhaustion or um, uh, prevent error uh, or recuperate from error, right? Um, especially in science, when time is, um, a, we are, we are the people that decide to study science, they look forward to move to the professional, to the professional practice, and um, a, in the professional practice, time is on the essence. So um, a, it will become very handy. I apologize. I, I talk a little. I apologize. No, you're doing great, Wanda. So you mentioned that the scientific research process is a very intensive process. Right? And, and sonification being an emerging field is perhaps at a disadvantage. You know, it is a field that requires time and effort to develop further. So what do you See. think needs to be improved in our academic field or research field to give a chance to sonification? There is, there is um, a, people need to believe in it, right? Um, a, um, the, 
the mindset of um, a, the people's in power, they they are working to to believe in it as they believe that one plus one is equals two, and as they believe that a line going up means that uh, something is uh, a racing or or a, a increasing. They need they need to believe in it, and once that mindset. Once that credibility is established, and that's why I, I work really hard symmetrically on establishing the theoretical, the experimental and theoretical theoretical evidence and uh, analyzing analyzing data, then it will be it, then it will be easier. But right now, as um, as we uh, establish the credibility, it will move a little bit slower. The, the aim is, to be able to transfer what uh, the the, te the technologies, uh, the techniques developed to use sonification, multi-sensoriality, because we are um, experimenting with haptics, to be able to transfer that to the mainstream research. I have been able to to do mainstream mainstream research, but I have also been able to find very good mentors. So um, uh, what, what I what I mean is that I have been able to find the people who trust that I can that I can do it, and I do it. Of course, I have to deliver I have to deliver a product. Uh, but um, uh, what, once that mentality change, then we will be able to freely write uh, write proposals and trust that our proposals will be will be evaluated on merit. And will not be evaluated from the pers from the perspective of what the evaluators think is possible and the, and what the evaluators think is not possible. Well, thank you, Wanda. Then you mentioned very good points about having good mentors and having a good support system, you know, to provide um, support to our students with disabilities in the STEM field. Now, moving on to my last question, do you have any advice? for persons with disabilities who would like to be engaged with astronomy or for scientific organizations who want to promote disability inclusion in their activities? That, that's, a, that's a question that touches closely, closely my heart. First, um, I want to begin by saying that I am not an economist or, or a disabilities study, studies expert, so I would not, I, I mean, I, I'm not disrespecting any uh, any of those fields. I, I respect them a lot, and I will give a, a humble advice from from my deepest ignorance. Um, and my advice is uh, to organizations, especially scientific organizations, and is that our scientific organizations need to begin by carrying a huge reformation that focus on on an empowerment, an empowerment that brings forth the the limitless possibilities of of each person of each individual of course if if i work there is a deliverable that you pay me to to produce right but if the company revolves around a mindset supporting supportive of uh, of economical and productivity model that will enhance and support for peoples with disabilities and all peoples, right? Peoples with disabilities and all peoples to produce at our own maximum, more deliver deliverables and, and discoveries will be will be produced. More discoveries in science will emerge. And, and at the, on the same tokens, all employees will be will be happier, and um, the competition uh, will be will be humanistic about engaging in in astronomy. My advice is to study really, really, really hard and do not give up. Sometimes we will sometimes we will get all aces. Sometimes we will not get all aces in our in our exams. Just do not stop studying. If you get a B, if you get a, a, a lower grade, it doesn't mean that you are not a good student. Don't get frustrated. Do not change your do not change your your path. Um, right now is a very good time to to come closer to the to the field because there is an awareness that the scientific field uh, of astronomy and space science there is an awareness that it was losing too much discoveries without it, without the integration of other sensorial modalities for for exploration. Okay. If uh, if you allow me to say 
yes, if you allow me to say, if you fancy learning, get in touch with Xing Yang and me, and I will tell you how to. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and your wisdom, Wanda. It is always a pleasure to talk to you. And like you say, don't give up. You know, the journey um, is a long way to go. There's a saying that uh, for a journey, we need to start with baby steps, right? So I guess yes. to you, thank you so much for your time. And to all our audience, I hope you've learned something interesting today. If you have any questions, reach out to me or to Wanda. Thank you so much for your time. And Enjoy your day at the Zero Conference. Thank you. Goodbye. Enjoy. Bye-bye.